Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange of The Media Speaks with you, bringing you day two out of uh, two days here with the uh, Fukushima. I want to say real quick to everyone, the, uh, the high def there, the camera likes to go ahead and make it two different videos, a low def here, um, the entire thing will be in one video. It, it gets confusing. I'm not really sure why it does it, but <clears throat> it does. All right, friends, you don't care about my camera. You care about the rest of your massive Fukushima update, and I'm going to give it to you. Uh, brought to you by the wonderful people at Sticker Junkie. You want to get your stickers made right? You want to go to Sticker Junkie. TEPCO admits a delaying report of major radiation leak into the Pacific Ocean for 10 months. This is more proof that even, and it's not, even if the fraudulent numbers that Fukushima gives you are safe, it should stand to reason that they're lying about the numbers because they've been consistently lying about everything all the way through this. And now they're lying on it more. I'm getting a blinking on that camera, Christelle, my behind-the-scenes queen. Um, they've been lying about everything consistently. So why is it that they would suddenly start telling the truth? We know that they changed the levels. Sweet. We know that they changed the levels that are acceptable for uh, consumption in food. They changed it and ruined it and raised it so that you're bringing all kinds of toxins into your body that they claim are safe. Well, not only are those numbers elevated and incredibly dangerous for your heart and your blood and cancer uh, and everything else, but they're lying about when it's happening and for how long it's happening. So even the fraudulent numbers are, are off. It says, while faith in Japanese economics is starting to falter, born out of the split in the Bank of Japan and endless macro data disappointments, trust in TEPCO and its governmental operators must be about to hit a new record low. Having promised and given up on the ice wall strategy to stop radioactive water leaking into the ocean, they were going to build an ice wall so that the water couldn't get out. It's been used um, for subway construction in the past. We reported on it here. Bloomberg reports that TEPCO officials have admitted that it's investigating the cause of a spike in radiation levels. Listen to this, friends. 23,000 becquerels per liter, liter versus the legal limit of 90. Now, even 90, for those of you that don't know what a becquerel is, it's a little mini explosion, for lack of a better word. It's a little tiny reaction that happens inside of your body. And the cell explodes, if you will. And it damages other cells and leads to all kinds of heart trouble, all kinds of cancers, all kinds of health problems in general. A becquerel is one of those per second. Therefore, they have found a spike in radiation levels at 23,000 becquerels. That means you have 23,000 chances to get some kind of cellular damage every second. If it makes you feel any better, though, they think that 90 is okay. They found it in drainage water that it believes subsequently leaked into the Pacific Ocean from the wrecked Fukushima nuclear power plant. The bigger problem, as NBC reports, is that TEPCO failed to report the leak for 10 months. That's almost a year for you Usher fans. The radioactivity increase was reported on Sunday, the company said in an email yesterday, and as Bloomberg reports, no workers were exposed and tests of irradiation levels in seawater in the port adjacent to the plant showed no significant increase, the company said. Because they're so trustworthy. Ocean water tests will be increased to daily sampling from weekly as it investigates the leak, it added. Rainwater is believed to have become contaminated through contact with radioactive substances that flowed into drainage ditches. A spokesperson for the, tep for the Tokyo-based company said today by phone, asking not to be named because of company policy. The company is unable to estimate the size of the radioactive water leak, the person said. So they don't even know how big it is. TEPCO, as, and they can't get near it. It's too radioactive. They can't get near it. It even melts down robotics. TEPCO, it says, as the company is known, that is GE, that's why you should never donate to General Electric. And if you have a money in a mutual fund or a stock option with them, make sure you get rid of it. 
They detected 23,000 becquerels per liter of cesium-137. Uh, cesium-137, as I like to say, is so deadly that uh, you know how bands like to call themselves obituary or pestilence. There's a band called cesium-137. Why? Because it's deadly. It gives you cancer. And if you're trying to uh, set a spooky vibe, you would pick a toxin. And that's what this is. That's what's going into the Pacific Ocean, where you're eating tuna out of it, where you're eating all kinds of seafood, seafood that you don't even know where it's from. Am I saying don't eat anything out of the Pacific Ocean? Yes, that's what I'm saying. It says it came from rainwater that accumulated on the top of reactor building number two. The utility said yesterday in a statement, the legal limit for releasing cesium-137 is 90 becquerels per hour, which or per liter, which also should under no circumstances be legal for the reason that I just gave you. TEPCO had reported failures in stemming radioactive water leaks at the plant since it had three reactor meltdowns almost four years ago following an earthquake and tsunami. But the fact that a massively radioactive leak occurred is not the worst of it. As NBC News reports, the operator of Japan's tsunami-stricken Fukushima nuclear power plant admitted that it failed to report a radioactive rainwater leak at the facility for 10 months. The company noticed a spike in radiation levels in the plant's drainage system, particularly after rainfall. According to Tokyo Electric Power Company, the official who spoke to the televised press conference on Tuesday, this was part of an ongoing investigation in which we discovered a water puddle with high levels of radiation on top of reactor number two building. And because this also happens to be one of the sources for the drainage system, we decided to report everything all at once, the unnamed official said, to explain why the findings weren't reported immediately. So basically, you've got this now toppled, uh, ready to poison anything that comes near it reactor building. And all the rain, believe it or not, it doesn't rain around the plant because, you know, that'd be helpful and they just decided to be nice rain that day. No, it rains, of course, on the plant. Well, if it's raining on the plant, it's infected. It's, it's radioactive. And then it drains off. And this is going to be going on for 35 or 40 years. It says the governor of Fukushima Prefecture, Masao Uchibori, criticized TEPCO's withholding of information. It is extremely regrettable the swift release of information and the importance of that awareness. These basic things were not carried out, he said in comments carried by Nippon TV. Good luck at the Olympics, though we suspect it will be a hard run in a lead vest, it asks. Yes, they're going to have the Olympics in the most poison area uh, in the entire Eastern world. And you might think, all right, well, Sam, I'm just going to tune you off. I'm just going to shut the show off because it doesn't matter. I can't do anything about it anyway. Well, there are things you can do. Um, you can limit your seafood for one. You can take high levels of vitamin C, aim for 3,000 milligrams a day. You can avoid mushrooms. You can avoid shrimp. Uh, you can try not to have any more dairy than you need because a cesium adheres to dairy products. It matters, okay? It's gonna matter. It might not matter to you now because you're sitting in your comfy house, but I can tell you what, it's gonna matter to you when you go to the doctors with that strange lump and he says, hey, I'm sorry, this is cancer. We're gonna sign you up for chemo. You're gonna lose your hair. You're gonna be really sick. You're gonna be throwing up. Your life's gonna be miserable. You're never gonna look right again. What? It matters then, doesn't it? So please, pay attention to the video and share this video, please. Um, Comonews.com, Fukushima fallout suit, sailors were marinating in radioactive particles. Now this is an update to the story that I had read yesterday. So thankfully I'm going to uh, go over this in more detail, exactly what happened to our uh, men and women here. I'm going to leave the end off because they again quote what we covered yesterday. So make sure you listen to yesterday's show if you're uh, confused. Oak Arbor, Washington, there is a group of sailors and marines, some from right here in the northwest, who consider themselves warriors, wounded in a battle they didn't realize that they were fighting against an enemy that's both terrifying and invisible. Of course, that would be radiation. It happened in 2011, right after Japan's devastating earthquake and tsunami. Now it says that group is suing over debilitating and even fatal diseases that may not show up for years. Yeah, like testicles swelling up to the size of tennis balls. In March and April of that year, the front line for the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet was the coast of Japan. When the 9.0 earthquake struck, followed by a massive tsunami, the 25-ship carrier group, led by the USS Ronald Reagan, arrived the next day to help. It was officially dubbed Operation Tomodachi. 
Aviation, Aviation Bosun's mate Dagan Honda of Oak Arbor recalls in the mission I was helping to save people. He was helping to save people's lives. That's what we do every day, and that's what we expected to do. He and Aviation Structural Mechanic Ron Wright of Kent spent day after day on the Ronald Reagan's flight deck, along with hundreds of sailors loading supplies and keeping the relief efforts moving along. All I was doing pretty much the entire time, says Wright, was carry one box, just pick it up, then walk it over, rinse, and repeat. Both say that they spent the majority of the day topside and worked almost every day of the entire two months mission. Now listen what they got for all their hard work. Listen what they got for saving lives. They got lied to and hosed, that's what they got. Um, both added that they had no idea of what was happening in coastal Fukushima at the TEPCO nuclear facility. Three of the six nuclear reactors suffered meltdowns. Uh, don't forget melt-throughs and melt-outs. Then several explosions funneled clouds of radiation into the atmosphere, and the prevailing winds sent most of that radiation over the Pacific, where the 7th Fleet was po positioned to help. So th when the earthquake hit, I remember this. TEPCO was saying that there was no danger of a meltdown. They purposefully lied. It says, so these sailors literally were marinating in radioactive particles, said attorney Charles Bonner. He represents more than 200, 200 sailors and marines, our boys and girls, in a class action lawsuit against TEPCO, claiming radiation from Fukushima has caused devastating health effects, including cancers, tumors, brain defects, and even death. There are already people dying of this, and a whole host of other difficult-to-diagnose complaints. Very serious illnesses for a very large population of very young people, said Bonner. I guess he likes the word very. Bonner adds that the 7th Fleet didn't know that it was sailing into a radioactive emergency because TEPCO, GE, brings good things to life, my ass, intentionally underplayed it. So it's not bad enough that they built a nuclear power plant on a known earthquake zone where many people told them that you were going to get a meltdown. No, that's not bad enough. They then lied about what happened in order to try to downplay this because you can't see radiation. Um, you can't, you don't know it's there. If you get good and juiced, you can get a metallic taste in your mouth. But if that happens, you've already been pretty well juiced. There's no way to know it's happening. It says... Um, they lied to the world and told the world that there was no meltdown, that everything was under control, Bonner said. And I remember talking to my friend Giselle the night that it was going on, and I remember them saying that it was not a meltdown, that they had dodged a bullet. And they, they knew the whole time. Meanwhile, we got our men and women over there trying to help them, getting juiced and lied to. Honda and Wright are both plaintiffs in the lawsuit for at least the first few days to a week of operation, Tomodaki, the sailors say that no one aboard the ship took any extra radiation protection measures. Honda remembers that when the Navy started changing protocols, one of the helicopters took off, and when it came back, they, like, quarantined the whole area by my shop, like my shop was ground zero, he said. And again, it, it, it's always, when Chernobyl happened, it was downplayed, downplayed, downplayed. And then a poor reporter in a helicopter noticed that they had exposed the fiery core. And you can see him saying, you know, let's get out of here, let's get out of here, move, 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 move. Again, the helicopters go up and they can see the lie. They can see that it's melting down. It says, sometime after that, Wright and Honda say every topside sailor had to wear extra booties and gloves and get scanned for radiation before entering the ship below. Yeah, because we all know that extra booties and gloves is a proper radiation protection. Yeah, it can't get through that. It can. He remembers one time that the machines went crazy while the pants that he was wearing had triggered one of the machines. It was just like beep, 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 he said. And when the scanners went crazy, that meant the radiation technicians would confiscate whatever was hot. Yes, I lost my pants. Other people lost boots, coats, probably a mixture of everything. So, if, have you seen the movie Silkwood? If not, make sure you do. When these machines go off like that, what it's doing 
is monitoring. It's telling you that you have received what is very likely a dose of radiation to such an extent that your life will never be okay again is usually what it means. Again, you've got to see the movie Silkwood. Guess what your pants sit by? There's no easy way to do this, friends. Guess what your pants sit by? Yep, the family jewels. So these people were getting their their privates juiced. They were getting their knees juiced. Bone cancer. They were getting their fat cells and their legs juiced. More cancers. Sending it through their circulatory system. Degenerating their discs so they can't move properly. This is what radiation does. Neither Wright nor Honda worried, saying that the Navy continuously reassured them, Honda adds. They said on board, you know, it's no big deal. But right after Tomodochi, Honda says that he started experiencing frequent migraines and unexplained fatigue that he'd never suffered from before. This is a healthy Marine. He says that his doctor told him that he has several discs degenerating at an unusual rate. Now, if you don't think that that's bad, you're wrong. Because my dad suffered degenerative disc disease his whole life, and it destroyed the quality of his life. I mean, really, part of me isn't even sad that he's gone, because his life was always racked by so much pain, and he could never really enjoy anything. That's what degenerating discs do. I, I know, okay? I've watched it happen. Uh, he says here, mine are degenerating rapidly compared to people in my age group, and it's not something that is normal for people my age to have. And again, my dad had it very young, and uh, it does ruin your life. It says, within a month of Operation Tadochi, T Tamadochi, Ron Wright, now a civilian, says that he started experiencing painful swelling of the groin, and we've gone over that yesterday. He's gone through three surgeries, and he might be infertile over this. And again, this isn't even, this is just the beginning. Those, those radioactive elements cannot be taken out of your body, and they will continue to destroy the health of these 200 people for the rest of their life. Um, friends, Congressman urges protection for power grid. An EMP attack could bring our civilization to a cold and dark halt. Um, this is from Mark Slavo, shtfplan.com. For those of you that don't know, there are a couple ways an EMT uh, can happen. The, the one that will definitely happen at some point, because they've happened before and they will happen again, is from the sun. Can't do anything about it. Um, you can send emails to the sun and ask him not to do it, but it, he never replies. The solar flares, the EMP, the electromagnetic pulse is what that stands for, is a burst of energy that will fry the grid that gives you heat, that gives you light, that makes your car work, everything fried. The other way this can happen is by setting off certain kinds of nuclear weapons in the atmosphere, which uh, Iran would probably like to do when they get their hands on a nuke. Um, I'm sure Putin would love to do it to us. I'm sure Obama would be more than happy to do it to Putin. These are the kind of things we're looking at here, and I'm bringing it into the Fukushima update because these kinds of things are a huge problem. And it, again, it's more nuke issues that affect you, where you're sitting right now, your life. It says, when it comes to an EMP attack, the question remains when, not if. Few other scenarios hold as much potential for disaster and disruption to the lives of everyone in society. At a moment's notice, 300 million Americans could be made instantly desperate, insanely desperate, and even likely to die in the aftermath. A single event could easily be enough to take down the power grid and render inoperable all of the computers and electronic tools that individuals, businesses, banks, and governments all rely upon. Uh, don't forget hospitals. But hospitals are protected from this. Uh, mostly no. Arizona Congressman Trent Franks recently reintroduced a bill intended to provide better security for critical infrastructure, with particular emphasis on the threat posed to the power grid by an EMP, which Representative Frank points out could occur either naturally from a solar flare or by way of a targeted man-made weapon. Now listen, we have money for uh, Obamacare to destroy your insurance, but we don't have money to stop something that could affect upwards to 90% of the country. 
It says, in reintroducing the bill this week, Frank said the Department of Homeland Security has the specific responsibility to secure the key resources and critical infrastructure of the U.S., that is to say your heat and your lights, etc., to include power production, generation, and distribution systems. That means getting the energy made and getting it to you. Thirteen years after this job description was enacted, our nation's most critical infrastructure and the systems that more than 300 million Americans, again, depend on every day for basic activities, are still vulnerable to large-scale blackouts. Again, Ron Paul had said that the DHS was utterly useless. Now you've got somebody else saying it. Anyone who understands how critical our power grid has become in modern America to feeding our families and keeping our children warm, like adults don't need to be warm, will understand why this act is so critically important. The Critical Infrastructure Protection Act will enhance DHS threat assessments for geomagnetic disturbances and electromagnetic pulse blackouts, which will enable practical steps to be taken to protect the vital electric grid that serves America. How many of you live in Ohio where it's been like 8 degrees? Uh, right now I'm getting ready to go snowboarding when I get off air before I go to bed. And uh, it's like 8 degrees outside, something like that. How would you like to not have any heat tonight? How would you like to not have any heat for the next uh, 6 months of nights? It says the electromagnetic pulse resulting from an extreme solar flare or a targeted nuclear blast has the power to single-handedly wipe out the electric grid and permanently disable nearly everything hooked up to it, from computers to electronic devices and much more. Um, in, in September, Frank laid out the consequences. It says our entire American way of life relies upon electricity and electronic technology. Our household appliances... Food distribution systems, that's what, get, that's what makes sure you, you have the, uh, the, the checks and balances that get the food to you so you can eat, so that there's food on the shelf. Telephone and computer networks, communication devices, cars, so now you can't drive the food anywhere. Airplanes, can't fly it there, none of your planes will take off. EMP, whacked them all. Factories, power plants, that's an important one. How would you like to, uh, do you realize that if a nuclear power plant can't cool itself within, I think, uh, a matter of hours, it will melt down and create uh, a nuclear meltdown that we will be uh, dealing with for the rest of the history of the country, most likely. That's what will happen. Uh, bank ATMs and even water and sewage plants could potentially grind to a halt without it. Moreover, while much of our critical military hardware is shielded from an EMP, our military relies upon largely unsecured civilian grid for more than 90% of its electricity needs in this country, without which it cannot affect its military mission. Therefore, it will shut down the military. And why do we not have all of our grid already shielded from this? Did you hear what I said? We have the technology to do it. We, we do it for the military. We just don't do it for anything that you know, supplies the military. It says, according to experts, including Dr. William Graham, who was the White House science advisor during the Reagan administration, an EMP attack over the continental United States could render 70 to 90 percent of our population unsustainable. That means uh, 70 to 90 percent of the population could die if this happens. Um, and again, EMPs from the sun are going to happen. It's not even a matter of a Putin-Obama pissing match here. Uh, Franks is urging legislation on the basis that Homeland Security is charged with protecting America, yet unable to do so. Failing to guard against an EMP means that the threat is to civilization itself. This links to all of this. Passage of this legislation will help the United States prevent and prepare for such an event by including large-scale blackouts into existing national planning scenarios. In other words, he wants them to plan for this. He wants that to be part of what they test when they do their, uh, their scenario plannings for disasters. Most importantly, it requires specific plans for protecting and recovering the electric grid and other critical infrastructure from a dangerous EMP event. Continuing, Frank said, there is a moment in the life of nearly every problem when it is big enough to be seen by reasonable people and still small enough to be successfully addressed. 
those of us across America live in a time when there is still maybe an opportunity for the free world to address and mitigate the vulnerability that naturally occurring or weaponized EMP represents to the mechanisms of our civilization. This is our moment. Well, that's great. How many of you have no idea what he just said? He's saying that if we don't act on the problem now, because he likes to be wordy, I guess. If we don't act on this problem now, we are going to have the window of opportunity close on us, and we will not be able to solve this at all. And when it happens, we'll be sitting ducks. It says it's unclear whether or not Frank's legislation would be practically effective in protecting the grid, nor is it clear whether or not it will become law. A previous version of Shield the Act, the Shield Act, passed the House but stalled in the Senate. How could the Senate let something that important go? Um, it says Franks echoed the sentiment of former CIA director James Woosley, who warned that an EMP could bring our civilization to a cold, dark halt. Uh, from, this is from Forbes. Congressional studies quoted by Woosley estimate that two-thirds of the population would die of starvation, disease, exposure, or violence related to social breakdown in the first 12 months alone. And again, we're, we're like a bunch of animals in this country. Uh, we don't care about anybody but our damn selves. So, of course, we'd be slaughtering in the streets. It says, to make matters worse, we would never even know what hit us because we would have no means to investigate, to say nothing of respond, just darkness and it says so what can you do to help yourself it says you can island yourself off and uh get off of the grid because it's so vulnerable you can have a solo photovoltaic system that provides 100 percent of your power needs yeah who can afford that that'd be nice it also mentions solar panels and how it would be extremely beneficial if all houses were to have solar panels on them I agree, but how many of you rent like I do? That's going to go over like a fart in church. No one's going to let you put that on their house. So it's very important for some of us that we concentrate on getting these problems solved Why we still have time. Because, friends, if we get an EMP, we're done. I mean, we are absolutely cooked. Um, friends, <clears throat> a few more stories to get to here on our massive Fukushima update. I just want to remind you to look up the work of Mike McLaughlin you'll find that he's writing some of the most awesome fiction extant today. And he's also a poet, and he does he's done a lot more political writings on his site. You're going to want to go look him up. Look up Mike McLaughlin right now. Go. M-A-C Laugh Lynn, L-I-N. And let him know you heard about his writings from The Correct Views. Tell him Sam told you about it. Make sure you let him know that I sent you there. And uh, enjoy. He's an excellent writer. It's that simple. Enjoy. Moving on, and this is brought to you by Change Transportation. If you live within a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, make sure if you need a taxi, you price check with uh, Change Transportation because they'll probably beat the rate that you have. Facebook.com, Change Transportation. Report, Iraqi forces again claim the U.S. is supplying ISIS with weapons drops. Now, I was one of the ones who kind of poo-pooed this because mistakes happen. Friendly fire happens. You accidentally shoot somebody on your side. You accidentally drop weapons or munitions to your enemy instead of your friends. It happens. It has happened through all of war history, and it will continue to happen for as long as we are stupid enough to keep killing each other. Well, this has happened so much and on so many different fronts. That there are people who are questioning whether or not this isn't on purpose. Um, we're going to go with it here, and I'd like your opinion in the comment line. Iraqi forces have once again sensationally charged that the U.S. military is purposefully dropping weapons to terrorist militants in the western parts of the country, according to the report. Well, we were the ones that freed Iraq, if you want to call it that, from Saddam Hussein, so I mean, what reason would they have to lie? The Iranian FARS news agency reports a group of Iraqi popular forces known as al hashad al-Shabi shot down a U.S. Army helicopter that was carrying weapons for the ISIL in the western parts of al-Baghdadi region in the al-Anbar province, province last week. The report claims that the fighters posted a picture of, and I can see the picture on this article, online of a downed helicopter and the weapons that were recovered. The claims come from the heels of reports last week that the Iraqi army shot down two British planes, also delivering weapons to the Islamic State. Now, there isn't that many accidental deliveries going to your enemies here. Something 
radical is going on here, and I'm begging people to please look into this. The Iraqi Parliament's National Security and Defense Committee has access to the photos of both planes where, that are British and have crashed while they were carrying weapons for, the, for ISIS. It says ISIL, same thing. Head of the committee, Hakam al-Zamali, said, according to the Arabic Language Information Center for the Islamic Supreme Council of Iraq. Hakim al-Zamali, a senior Iraqi investigator, added that the current government in Baghdad is receiving daily reports from security forces in the An-Albar province about flights airdropping weapons to ISIS. Did you hear 